Hey everyone, welcome back to the course. So in the last video we talked about some of the different types of computer crimes we might see, some different challenges for investigators, uh, so things like encryption or anti-forensics, and then also the investigative process. So in this video we're going to talk about criminal, civil, and administrative investigations. So criminal investigations, as the name implies, everyone probably already figured that this is talking about a violation of some law. So it could be like a local law, it could be a state law, federal law, um, you know, or province law, depending on where you live. Also like international law, if you've been really, really bad. So generally, this is going to lead to, um, for the most part, jail time, but also could lead to fines and possibly both. So with criminal investigations, um, you basically need to f follow some kind of standard uh, forensic process. So um, something uh, basically approved by your particular jurisdiction or the jurisdiction that you want to, um, you know, prosecute in. You need to make sure that they've signed off on some type of, um, you know, digital forensic or computer forensic investigation process. One po uh, key point is a formal investigation report. It is required for a criminal investigation. So um, you'll definitely want to keep that portion in mind if you decide to take the CHFI exam. Um, that is going to be something that you, you may see um, tested in some capacity. The, for criminal investigations, the standard of proof has to be very high, right? So basically that beyond a reasonable doubt is what we uh, prove. And it's the burden of proof there is on the prosecution, right? So they have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that, you know, uh, Joey committed that crime, right? So uh, keep that in mind. We also have civil investigations. Um, so this is just a dispute between two parties. Um, so it kind of differs from criminal in the aspect of it's just monetary damages. So somebody, you know, sues somebody and then, you know, they get X amount of dollars, you know, in return from the judge. Now, something else to point out here is it's not beyond a reasonable doubt. So you only need to uh, basically prove the preponderance of truth, right? So just a greater than 50% um, showing that like, yes, I am telling the truth your honor, um, and that way the judge rules in your favor, uh, favor. Uh, judge or jury. You can uh, have either one in a civil case. And then we have administrative investigations. So basically these are your um, internal um, investigations uh, by the company or organization. Um, as you see, I have a little logo from uh, Customs and Border Patrol. Um, but, uh, you know, again, uh, it may or may not be law enforcement related, uh, but generally it's just going to be an internal investigation. So um, a lot of times these, these actually turn into criminal investigations, right? So, uh, for example, you know, we, we want to see what, documents you know joey is sending out so we start a administrative investigation and then we realize that joey's been stealing our intellectual property um so then we make it criminal right we refer it to law enforcement and we might even pursue a civil one at that point too right we can go ahead and just sue them for stealing that stuff so these as i mentioned these are going to uh, kind of cover things like policy violations threatening behavior so you know like your sexual harassment type of stuff um, and also like uh, corruption, bribery, uh, you know, things like uh, uh, somebody getting a promotion when they shouldn't have, right? Um, just because of whatever with the boss. Um, so, you know, just, just kind of that generalized, um, you know, company related sort of stuff that occurs. And again, a lot of times these turn into criminal investigations. So what are some of the rules of forensic investigation? So, um, you know, not in any particular order here and not a full list by any means. Uh, but uh, basically, we want, we want to limit access to the original evidence. So by that, uh, we, you know, of course, we want to make duplicate copies and then look at those, right? We also want to make sure the chain of custody, right? So um, that, that goes back to the limiting access to the original evidence because not everyone needs to touch this stuff, right? Because at, at the end of the day, when we get into court, we're going to have to prove like, okay, you know, who touched it and why, right? What was their legitimate reason for interacting with the evidence? We'll also record any changes to the evidence, right? So, um, you know, naturally some of the things we do in forensics might alter certain data. So we have to make sure that uh, we have a solid process in place to record that type of stuff and be able to, you know, again, in a court of law, say, well, we had to change it because this is how this works, right? Also, uh, you know, setting standards, you know, for the investigation. So saying, hey, you know, don't, you know, don't run in there and turn the, you know, pull the plug on the computer when it's on. You know, we, we want to wait so we can acquire the evidence. Also knowing, uh, you know, your limitations of skills, right? So an earlier example 
I mentioned, you know, hey, a Mac system, maybe I don't know about it. Call somebody else. Um, so know your limitations, right? Don't say, oh, I got this, because then you're going to mess up the, the actual case. So, you know, find find appropriate people or agencies that have the resources that you're lacking. Secure storage, right? So we, after we get the evidence, um, we want to obviously store it securely so nobody can come in and mess with it. Uh, we also all have to understand, you know, the, the legalities, right? So, um, you know, as part of the rules of a forensic investigation, we have to understand what's happening in the particular jurisdiction that we're working in, you know? So, uh, you know, can we actually even prosecute this thing, right? Or can we even investigate? You know, is it a crime for us to do certain aspects of the investigation, right? So um, just keep that type of stuff in mind. And then, of course, uh, you know, um, you know, industry tools. So staying abreast of what's changing in the industry, what are the latest tools, how they function, how they're beneficial, uh, depending on what we're trying to do. So just keep all that in mind. So ETI is another thing, um, you know, you'll you'll definitely see in the, the official material. So it just stands for Enterprise Theory of Investigation. So um, essentially what this does, it takes a holistic approach to criminal investigations. Uh, so, for example, or you criminal, uh, criminal or civil, um, for example, you know, uh, let's just say it's, a, you know, a drug ring, right? So, um, you know, as an investigator, I see that, okay, well, you know, this guy over here, you know, pushes a little bit of, you know, of uh, narcotics, uh, but not too much, right? So then, um, you know, rather than just saying, okay, well, this is just a one-time thing, right? This is just one drug dealer or whatever. Um, you know, we, we actually instead kind of develop a pattern, right? So we notice, well, you know, yeah, that guy's dealing drugs, but he knows this guy over here, you know, and, and that guy's dealing drugs too. And so we start to piece together kind of the, the organization, right? So that criminal organization, and that's what this is all about, right? This, this is helping dismantle like, you know, street gangs or, you know, higher level crime gangs. Um, you know, this is one of the tools that law enforcement uses to try to dismantle them. So basically, it's not focusing on the, like the one person; it's focusing on the whole picture. So different types of evidence. We've got volatile evidence. We always want to collect this before we shut off a machine. So keep that in mind uh, for your examination. Do not like pull a plug on a machine. Don't do any of that stuff until you've been able to try to at least acquire the volatile evidence. So things like the system time. Um, files that are open, process information, uh, server or driver information, the command history, etc. And then non-volatile evidence, right? So, uh, you know, things that uh, will stick around after we cut the power, at least for a bit. Uh, you know, so, so slack space, hidden space, swap files, registry settings, you know, unused partitions, etc., etc. So in this video, we talked about several different things, right? So we talked about uh, criminal, civil, and administrative investigations. We also went over ETI, what that is. So again, Enterprise Theory of Investigation, and that's that holistic approach to doing investigations to try take, to try to take down the entire criminal organization. In the next video, we're going to talk about some different laws that are pertinent as forensic investigators.